Hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to my organic garden and thanks for joining me here on the porch. In just a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how I planted corn in the garden just two weeks ago. And when it's done, I'm going to show you what that corn looks like now. It grows so fast. Before we do that, I want to share some things with you that I've learned about corn. I've grown it for years in my garden and I think what I have to tell you is going to help you be a better gardener too. All I have needs, I have not provided. So there's basically three kinds of corn. There's GMO, hybrid, and heritage. Stay away from the GMO. That leaves hybrid and heritage corn. Hybrid corn is bred from two parent plants that picks up the best characteristics from the two types of plants. Heritage corn has one parent plant, and again, it is also bred for the best characteristics of that plant. Now, I choose to grow hybrid corn. I have grown heritage corn with success too. Now you may have heard that if you want to save the seed, you should not grow hybrid corn. You should only grow heritage corn. And that's true to a certain degree. I've saved seed from a heritage corn called Bodacious. And I'm now in about the fifth generation of seeds from corn that I have saved myself. It's easy to do. And it was true to the parent. So I have tried to save the seed from two other hybrid corn that I grow, Golden Queen and Silver Queen, and it didn't do well. So how do you grow three different types of corn at the same time? It's all about how fast they mature and when you plant them. And here's how you do that. I'm gonna use what I grow as an example for you to follow. I'm going to plant bodacious corn first. It matures fast, it tassels out fast, it pollinates its own, the ears in that batch of corn before Golden Queen and Silver Queen are maturing, tasseling, and pollinating. So if I stagger the time that I'm planting the two types of corn, the bodacious is not going to cross pollinate with the golden queen and silver queen. So I've already planted the bodacious and that's the corn I'm going to show you right now that I planted just two weeks ago. I'm going to wait one more week before I plant golden queen and silver queen except honestly this year I couldn't find golden queen so I'm trying a new one called Buhl, B-U-H-L. So when you plant a golden corn and a white corn together, they are going to cross pollinate. They mature at about the same time, within a week to 10 days of each other. So they're still going to be pollinating, cross pollinating. But I don't mind a bicolor corn. And here's how it's going to work. The corn on the edges are going to be white and yellow, but then the corn that's in the middle those are the ones that are going to be bicolor. Now, let's plant some corn. This is my garden in the early stages of planting bed number three and four halfway down of each bed. So the first half and the first half are going to have bodacious corn. And the reason why I'm doing it that way is I want to create a block of four rows so that they can pollinate easier than if you did just one long row. So you see here I've got some cleaning up to do first. I've got to get rid of the weed from hell. That's dollar weed. And I'm going to leave the volunteer dill that's coming up and just see if we can have some dill mixed in with the corn.
Well, you can see that Bodacious is a hybrid. And yet, I've been saving seed with a very good success rate. So this is seed that's probably third generation. And this is still in the packet. I've kept it in the freezer. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and plant the rest of this today. Those two beds are planted with two rows each of corn and I planted them 12 inches apart but you notice in each place there's two kernels. I do that because I don't know what the germination rate is and I always like to keep the best one. Here's the other bed same thing every 12 inches put two kernels in now that little ditch that I made is about two inches deep maybe even three I think it's two corn needs to be buried at least an inch and I found it to be better if you bury them about two inches so now I'm going to cover it up and on to the next stage of putting some clover in there as well. I'm going to put this in right along with the tomato plant. I have had tomatoes come in, come in with the corn and they do just fine together. So I'm going to leave it. It won't hurt anything. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? I think one more will do it. Those two beds of corn are done. There's been some clover interplanted and I'm going to wait about two weeks before I put the black eye peas in amongst the corn. And the reason I do that is the peas come up and grow faster than the corn does initially. And I don't want the corn to feel any competition for sunlight. Now you know the drill, after you plant seeds, water them in. Well, according to my garden plans, the rest of the corn is going to go all the way across my main aisle and into one, two, three, four beds over there. But as I mentioned, I'm going to wait at least two weeks before I plant that sweet corn. I planted corn just two weeks ago and they're already big enough to thin them out. Let me show you a few before we get started on this video. I'm going to show you why I recommend that you put two kernels per hole, sometimes three, especially if you're saving your own. Now my corn had been in the freezer for three or four years, so it doesn't surprise me that some of them didn't come up. So the viability of corn goes down the longer that you store it. Nothing had come up here, so I just planted three kernels here come right next door and only one out of the two came up. Come next door here, nothing came up. But then you come over here, look, both of them came up. Just one came up there, two came up down there. And 12 inches away across the bed here, two came up there, but then nothing came up here. So I'm putting corn there but look you see it one came up there 
and none came here so I'm going to go ahead and plant two or three kernels there. It's okay if they're not quite ripe all at the same time because if you're like me you're going to be going through your garden and checking your corn when they get to that stage where you want to pick it because quite honestly in if you want your corn to be perfectly sweet and full you're going to be watching it pretty darn carefully this is part of a series called how to grow corn today was stage one when you shop for corn be sure to look for hybrid or heritage plant two or three kernels every 12 inches one to two inches deep when you're through, be sure to remember, water them in. And finally, in about two to three weeks, they'll be four inches tall, and then you want to thin it to one stalk per hole. Now you can leave those volunteers if you like. Hey, it's free vegetables. It won't hurt your corn at all. In the next video, I'll be covering companion planting, when to weed, and if and when to add mulch. Be sure to subscribe, you won't want to miss it, and it sure would help me if you would hit the thumbs up. You may have heard me refer to my garden journal. I refer to mine all the time. Mine is about 10 years old now, and it really is a help. I've made one for you to print out, or if you want to do an electronic version like I have, both versions are found in my Etsy shop. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful. Greatest thankfulness, Lord, unto me.